Good morning, Mademoiselle Baptiste. My name is Colonel Hargrove. I'm from the Office of Strategic Services. I heard you've been looking for us. To be honest, we've been looking for you. We just didn't know it. Now, I'm sorry to be crass, but while we've been aware of your brother Jacques for some time, we had never heard of Manon Baptiste until you made contact with our station chief yesterday morning. We knew your brother occasionally worked with another assistance member. I'm just sorry to say that I assumed it was another man. He was wise to keep your identity a secret. I've seen several good operatives denounced by people they thought they could trust. With both your anonymity and your brother gone, you could have easily opted to return to a quiet civilian life. You could have even collaborated. Turning over those papers you collected to the Gestapo would have earned you a lot of special privileges under the German authority. Instead, you committed yourself to a life on the run, away from everyone and everything you've ever known. From the looks of your G2 debriefing, you and your brother found yourselves in some pretty hairy situations during the early days of the occupation. And it's exactly that kind of experience we need to employ if our intelligence operations are to stand a chance. We're preparing to launch a major assault in North Africa very soon. Unfortunately, all the men we've sent down to do reconnaissance have had their covers blown. Now, as serendipity would have it, we've learned that a Vichy propaganda magazine has sent a female correspondent all the way to Casablanca to profile the brave men of the Africa Corps. We want you to intercept this woman and take her place. It should provide the ideal cover for getting in there and seeing what Rommel is up to. And if the opportunity presents itself, we want you to take action to disrupt his operations. If successful, your exfiltration will be by airplane, specifically in an old Northrop Alpha that's perfectly suited for this kind of special operation. The pilot is a lieutenant in the Air Transport Command who's been given strict orders not to even look at you, as we don't want to compromise your identity in any way. You'll be briefed on the rest of the specifics during your transit to the African continent. It's a privilege for the OSS that you want to join our ranks. Be careful and good luck. I'll see you when you get back. Casablanca, 5th November 1942. Hello, Manon. My name is Captain Ted Albrick. I was part of the original OSS office in Washington and have just been assigned as your air control. I must say it's always exciting to watch our ranks grow with brave, honorable individuals such as you. How are things in sunny Africa? You were to be meeting a local operative, but unfortunately, he has since been discovered. The mission now rests soundly on you. Local Nazi agents are searching your hotel, and they've brought troops from the Africa Corps with them. Escape the hotel and find your way to our operative's house. There you will find a dossier on the logistics officer who has been shipping supplies to a secret base in the desert to the west. Use this dossier to locate the officer's house. You will find the location of the Africa Corps supply base there. With the location of the depot in hand, infiltrate the supply convoy and quietly hitch a ride to that location. Things seem to have rapidly fallen apart, but by acting fast you can still help make Operation Torch a complete success. After getting out of the hotel, find the operative's house and obtain the dossier on the logistics officer. Then find the location of the supply depot and get yourself out of town. Go to it, Manon. You've got your work cut out for you.
Merci.
ti! Lighting the torch, 5th November 1942, once the truck has stopped within the walls of the supply depot, it's your job to gather all the information you can regarding the movement of the Africa Corps, and pass it on to the American fleet of Operation Torch. First find the motor pools dispatch hut and get your hands on their shipping records. Next, we've learned that a photographer from a Nazi propaganda magazine in France is visiting the depot. By stealing her identity you should be able to move about the fort more easily. To ensure she doesn't expose the deception, find a way to detain her until your mission is complete. Just play your role, mine on. If a soldier approaches you, try to convince him of your identity by taking his picture. And above all, never reveal that you are carrying a weapon. Use your new identity to gain access to a radio and contact the American fleet with the location of the supply depot. They will send a plane to pick you up, followed closely by bombers to destroy the depot.
have identification? The definite sea is water. What are you doing? Your credentials, please. Nice credentials. You have identification? You're definitely in order. What are you doing? Burning Sands, 5th November 1942. Nice work, Manon. Bombers are on the way to Ape and had you to destroy the depot you've discovered, but we must make sure Rommel's tanks are sufficiently deprived of fuel. There should be an armory somewhere nearby. Find it and procure some explosives. Locating a pass may help you elude the guards in the area of the armory. You will encounter doors sealed with padlocks, rather than searching for key. It will be easier to simply shoot off the locks, but be forewarned, this will attract the attention of any enemy personnel nearby. We've learned that a cipher key we have not broken is somewhere in the fort. Locate it and use the photographer's camera to get as much information on film as you can. Once you have the bombs, use them to destroy the four fuel trucks that are now loaded with gasoline for Africa tanks. Our bombers will take care of the rest of the supplies. By any trucks that are already loaded will surely make a run for it at the first sign of an air raid. Someone approved this? No photography is allowed. Someone approved it? Fine, proceed.
you bring papers with your camera? Anything for an eight. Namaste, continue. May I see your papers? Namaste, continue. Achtung, alle Durchsager. Ich erinnere daran, dass wir diese Woche eine Fotografin zu Gast haben, die unseren Einsatz in Togo dokumentiert. Nehmt euch anständig und seid ihr gegenüber genauso höflich und zuvorkommen, als ob es eure eigene Mutter wäre.
eine Durchsage. Ich erinnere daran, dass wir diese Woche eine Fotografin zu Gast haben. Ally in the Desert, 5th November 1942. Your mission is accomplished, but your recover was definitely blown. Your challenge now is to escape before the bombers arrive. We've sent one of your best pilots to pick you up, but he cannot land until you have cleared the area. Remember, this is a base for the Africa Corps, so there are sure to be tanks in or around the fort. Use the terrain to your advantage. Stay out of the open, and keep an eye peeled. Even without anti-tank weapons, a determined soldier can destroy a panzer with their superior tactics. There are three anti-aircraft emplacements around the airfield that need to be disabled so our plane may land safely. Toss a grenade inside the emplacement and the gun's own ammunition should take care of the rest. Once the guns are disabled, signal the pilot by turning on the landing lights. The controls for these lights will be in the control tower. Once you have turned on the lights, move to the airfield as quickly as you can to board the plane. Oh, and enjoy the ride.
Tanks were a cornerstone of the Nazi Blitzkrieg attack strategy. Though armored fighting vehicles were developed on all sides, it was General Heinz Guderian of the German army whose groundbreaking strategies and tactics led to the creation of the dreaded panzer divisions he later commanded. Other generals, such as Rommel, used the destructive power of these multi-ton armor-plated Goliaths to put Germany far ahead of the Allies in the early days of the war.